basically the service that we provide is a short-term accommodation service where the young people who will be referred to us from the central placement service um, in the city council and they will be young people who will have been homeless um, up until that point um, and then they'll come and stay with us what's supposed to be for around six months and during that time um, we provide support and accommodation for them. So we have 12 units of accommodation um, for young, when I say young people it's young adults so 18 to 25 year olds, mm -hmm. males and females, singles and couples. support that we provide, what we do is we work in the care and case management model. So a case manager is essentially someone, a professional, who works with the young person in holistically. So we, we do assessments and then we do support plans. So from the assessment that will inform the support planning, where they'll look at every aspect of the young person's life and look at where their needs are and what their goals are. It's really about what the young person wants. It's not about what we think that they want or what we think that they need. It's about what they feel that they need or what they feel that they want. Um, ultimately, our hope is that within that period of time, we will have stabilised them to a point where they're able to move on into long-term or support long-term private accommodation usually. We also provide on-site support 24 hours a day, so our young people can come and go as they please. Right. Um, and there's staff support here to, for whatever might come up for them over that period of time. Well, we try to provide, uh, first of all, a safe space for the residents. Um, and we try we, we work with them to the, the residents would come in uh, presenting with different issues and we'd find out what them issues are and try and work towards uh, try and work towards helping them with their issues and, and um, in different ways depending on the, the different needs I think truly understand and you can really you can build a, a plan for addressing those needs and supporting them. When you're working in a place like this, um, lots of different things can happen because you're working with lots of different people. Um, and of course, no two of them are the same. And they'll all have different needs. There could be medical needs, there could be um, social needs, you know. You can be very diverse in the work that you're, you're doing. And so there needs to be someone here all the time. Um, in the event of an emergency. But it's not just about in the event of an emergency. There'll be days when um, a resident is not having a good day um, and you're there to talk to them, whether that's at you know, four o'clock in the afternoon or uh, you know, at three in the morning. Often the young people that come to us, they're very vulnerable, they've had very difficult life experiences. I was 15 and my dad got diagnosed with a, a liver cancer and I watched him die from uh, 15 till I was 17 and when he was 17, I, when I was 17 he passed away. Um, uh, my, my family home was closed down and uh, me and my brother would end up in hostels. Uh, no, it was, sorry, it was before that. My ma, as in my dad just died, and I found out my ma had cancer as well. Um, I watched, I watched my dad, my ma then die from, uh, from, from, from 17 till I was 19. And my ma and my dad weren't alive. So I, I ended up then in a homeless service. Everybody knows what the word stigma means, but I don't think everybody understands how it affects uh, everything. We often hear the young people say to us, you know, but no one cares, or sure, I'm just nobody. Um, there's a lot of this feeling of being nobody, and um, that, like that, when they're, when they're just out and about, that they're not part of society, they don't feel part of society. People might just walk past and not even acknowledge their existence, and they might be used to that for years. Everyone has this picture in their head, like, oh, if you're homeless, you're on drugs, you're on drink, oh, like, something is happening, like, I but it's not, homeless. like, I even thought that before I came homeless, that's what homeless was. Lose but a job when, and come homeless. Yeah, but when you're in that situation yourself, like, it's not as totally different, every situation is different, like, it's not always, like, a sleeping bag, I don't call it, it's bridge, like, begging for drugs. When you're 
working with, and I deliberately use the word with, a resident. Um, sometimes you can be fighting stigma. Um, and you, you're not just fighting the stigma of homelessness, you're fighting the stigma of the other services. I'm not going to use that service, they're all such and such in there. Or People such as the Gardaí they, or uh, authority figures, they might have difficulties engaging with them and then they might see us in a similar light. Anxiety around dealing with people in authority, so they might often come to us very close and very tense thinking, you know, they're the staff and we're us. And it, takes a, it can take a little while for us to break that down because we're working with adults here, you know, and we, we treat all of our young people as adults and with respect and dignity. And we expect the same from them as well to treat the staff that way. And we will work with them and they will begin to trust us. And you can see the difference in them. You can see the energy calm down. You can see them relax. You can see them starting to be more fully themselves when they can come to you and say, look, I am having trouble with this. Can you help me with it? I don't know what to do. And of course your response is, I'm very glad you came to me. Of course we can. At the moment there's a big problem with, um, as far as moving people on to independent um, living because of um, economy in this country at the moment. Um, the lack of housing and then the lack of education I feel with regards landlords. Just trying to find someone that will rent them an apartment is is very very difficult. Like now when we ring a landlord straight away to a minute here Focus Ireland you're living in Focus Ireland there's no thanks but that's it you won't even get a few one off. Or even rent allowance you will not accept rent allowance or accept anything like that like you know. We have people here that um, that, that, that work that have jobs that have um, accomplished tremendous feats of personal development. And then to have someone close the door on them and say, I'm sorry, I don't want to rent an apartment to you. Um, and to have, and it's not just that happens once or twice, that can happen again and again and again. And it can be very disenfranchising. You know, there can be a lot of disillusionment with that. Success in a service like this is not always measurable. You won't always get to see it, because sometimes it can take years. Um, but that doesn't mean that it isn't there. The fact that they're seeing themselves going further uh, than where they are now, after they've already come so far, to see that in somebody, that's what I consider a success. Uh, very much so. What I hope um, for the future of George's Hill, I hope it uh, will be empty. Everybody, you know, deserves to have a place they can call their own, their home, like, you know, of their own. What I really dream for or hope for in the future is access to accommodation when people are ready to move on. I'd like my own little house to pay my own bills and, you know, like my own little garden or something or something I can play with, like, you know, like just, just something normal, just something normal, like a house. That's all, like, it's not much to ask for, that's all they want. I would like to break down the, 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 the roots of these problems. And until then, um, myself and the rest of my colleagues are going to work together um, to try and achieve that goal. Mm -hmm.